Hello, welcome or welcome back to my YouTube channel, Maand Knitwear. My name is Umbriel, um, and today I have a knitting podcast for you in store. So get yourself a cup of coffee or tea and sit back, relax, get your knitting, crocheting out, and join me into seeing what I've been knitting on lately. Hi. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Umbriel and I am a knitter and knitwear designer, I guess, based in the Netherlands and I am back. So for those of you who are returning viewers, you know that I spent two months in South Africa and now I'm back in the cold, in the cold Netherlands. So I am cold. <laughs> Um, actually today it is not too bad and also I've just been cranking the heat so I'm okay. Um, but I feel a little bit out of practice because I feel like I haven't done this in a while and that's because I've had a whole holiday and everything and I have so much to show you today. So today I have a knitting podcast for you. Um, I'll show some finished objects, some, wor uh, some work in progress. And uh, I have some questions at the end for you that I might need your help with a little bit. So um, yeah, uh, please stick around to help me on those. And sorry for the jumping around. I am a little bit out of practice and also I'm in a different spot that I am usually in. I have a ring light uh, where I can clip my phone into. So now I can just sit wherever I want uh, when I want to record. So yeah. Um, I decided on this spot because this is where I always block my knits on the table um, and they were blocking they're like all the way dry basically so uh, yeah they were dry right now so my whips are on top of them don't worry I wouldn't do that if they were wet but yeah um, I thought it was interesting to sit next to where I always block my knits I'll just start with a knitting podcast right now and uh, show you what I've been knitting on. First up, what I've been wearing. This is my Mati um, in Noro Khaki Gori. And I'll stand up so you can see. But I made it into a sweater. So it's long. And I talked about this one um, in my last podcast. Uh, I made it into a sweater and I omitted the buttons and I haven't blocked it because I've just been wanting to wear it and I didn't want it to be wet and that I couldn't wear it for a while. Um, but what I would do differently if you're interested in making it, because now I got a little bit of wear out of it, I would have made the buttons if I would do it again. Um, just because then you can close this because I thought, oh, it's a nice summer sweater, but even in the summer, because when I was in South Africa, I wore this um, all the time too. But then when it would get cold, this is an area that you want to have covered. So I wanted to have it like closed. So I needed the buttons. So yeah, I should have just made the buttons. Also, it's just like opening, like flaring out all the time. And I'm not sure if I like that. Plus I made the, uh, polo a little short like eight centimeters instead of nine and it like I don't know if you can see but it, see it's like dropping back there so I don't know how to like keep it here you know what I mean like there it's like always going down so yeah but other than that I really like it and I like the way it looks with a turtleneck underneath nice and warm and beautiful yarn so i overall happy few things that i would do differently or would i would recommend for other people to do differently okay <laughs> can you tell i'm out of practice i feel all like la, 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 la. <laughs> okay um fo's i have a couple of fo's that i want to show you uh, first of, first off, and I promise it's not only socks, so if you uh, are not into socks, 
don't worry, it will be less socks in a little bit. Um, but they are my Kirsten Bosch socks. So this is why I said like, oh yeah, I'm a knitwear designer, I guess. Um, I have this pattern out for testing right now and I expect to release it the end of February. Um, but this is my very first design and I've had a lot of designs in my head and I've shown them on here. Uh, two things that I've been working on, but um, I figured I should start with a sock pattern because then you have a lot of things like difficult grading that you don't have to do yet, but you do experience the testing process. So I just figured I would start with socks. Um, yeah, and this is uh, how they are, what they look like. This is my middle length sock. So this is kind of between a shorty, which would be like right here. So there's three options for the length. Uh, and this is the middle length and you have a long one and then like a shorty. And this is like the middle length, which I think is a really cute length. So yeah, I'm really happy with them. This sample is knitted in Cowgirl Blues sock yarn, um, orchid blush and lemon, which I think is a really pretty combination and my test knitters have been knitting away on them too and it's super super fun to see uh what they make and that people make something that was your thought at some point you know it's really weird to see that like all of a sudden see someone like oh the Gerson Bosch socks by man knitwear and I'm like that's me <laughs> yeah um, and I think the most interesting part of it is my folded cuff. I have two options, a stockinette, a uh, folded cuff and a ribbing. Um, but I think it's, yeah, I'm really proud of them. So yeah, let me know if you like them and keep an eye out on my Instagram where I will share when the pattern is out. So, yay. <laughs> uh, that's the first FO. Second FO, I jammed out so fast. Um, this is my test knits uh, for King Viber, uh, which is a yarn brand, uh, but they also make some patterns. And this is the Zodiac jumper. And I made it in a mohair and two sport weight fabrics. Yeah, fingering weight slash sport weight. No sport weight. They're both sport weight. Um, the recommended yarn for this is DK, but I figured it's all like loose C gauge anyway, so it doesn't really matter if I use anything between a, like lace, which is a mohair, or a DK. So, yeah. The purple yarn is African Expressions in this colorway, I don't know, the purpley grayish one. It's not super purple the first time you look at it, but it's kind of nice that the light is shining and you can really see the colors pretty well now. Yeah, and I haven't woven in my ends. I also haven't blocked them um, because when I came back from South Africa, I first needed to wash all my knits. That's what's blocking right now here. That's my most worn uh, knits in South Africa. And then next will be the things that I finished there that I need to block. So, yeah. Um, but I really like the way that this sweater fits. Um, it's like really nice on the shoulders. It has short rows to make this higher. Like, so you start at the back which is just simple, like a straight line. And then on the front, when you pick up the fronts, you do short rows to make it like higher here than here, which is interesting, I haven't seen before. And I really like how it makes the sweater fit. So this will be something I'll keep an eye out for, I guess. Um, yeah, and, and also you can bear, you cannot see where the short rows are. So some good, good German short rows. <laughs> um, yeah, 
And I, yeah, I really like the way it fits. It's like a perfect sweater for taking with you on like yoga. I really, really like bringing, I like putting a sweater on to wear it to yoga and then just take it off there. But you can't have like a huge sweater to do that, I feel like. And this is like so tiny when you fold it up, like you just like, it's like really small compared to other sweaters. So yeah. And the reason I haven't woven in my ends yet, I do that after blocking. So uh, just to see if I want to change anything and to give the yarn the space or something. I don't know if that makes sense, but I feel like that makes sense. So that's what I do. Um, yeah, not much more to say. Zodiac jumper. Um, yeah. Another info. And it was really nice. It's a six millimeter needle, so I was done so fast. And I really do like the way that the mohair looks. Like it's see through, but it is a sweater. Like, yeah. So it was nice. Nice, nice sweater to have. And then my final uh, FO is another pair of socks. I'm sorry. I don't know what's happening. <laughs> I, I shouldn't apologize for that. I mean, I'm knitting and I'm sharing my knitting, so there's no need to apologize, but I feel like socks are maybe a little less interesting to show, but um, don't worry, I have enough enough things to show you and I'm going through them pretty fast. So, But I was traveling for, so I went to South Africa for two months together with my boyfriend um, and I worked remotely from there. And then at the end, we had two weeks break and I had this idea of making this vintage sweater, sweater. And I even like recorded some stuff about it because I thought, oh, it would be such a fun, like travel vlog knitting, knitting edition or something. But it was really challenging because the, the vintage sweater, it was, it had these, this motif of these marguerite flowers at the top and it was flat, knit flat. So, uh, I had to work the color work, like stranded color work and intarsia at the same time knitting flat. So also while purling. And I, I mean, I can, I, I can manage doing that. That's nice, <laughs> but it takes so much time and it's not something you can do like on the go. So we were traveling and I was like, we rented a car and my boyfriend was driving because he wanted to and I was sitting next to him and I was like no way I'm getting that sweater out I mean I can't do that in the car right now like that's something I want to just have nothing on my mind for and I also wanted to keep like I was navigating and stuff so yeah so I cast it on a pair of socks so these are also not blocked yet hence the thread uh, I'll weave them in at the end after blocking. But these, if you remember my previous episode, I showed you some yarn that I bought. I have the label still here. Uh, I bought this yarn at Natural Yarns in Cape Town. And it's, uh, it was a self-striping yarn by Wasserwelten Opel. And it's just like self-striping pattern and my boyfriend really liked the sample on it and look at the sample that is for the socks see it is like ribbed i don't know if you can tell maybe i should do it like this can you tell like it's like a ribbed sock with a folded cup so it's basically what i made i feel like like it looks, yeah, it has like rib on the top. <laughs> this is so silly, but he was like, I like this sock. And I was like, okay, I'll make that. So it's like ribbed. And then the bottom of the foot is stockinette. And it looks even like it has a folded cuff, which is something I did for my Gerson Bosch socks. Um, but that's what I made. And then I did an afterthought heel because I, like making afterthoughts he heels because 
I'm gonna have to think that much about the heel then. It's like the easiest for me. Um, by the way, I have a tutorial on the afterthought heel if you're interested. And uh, I made sure that they matched exactly, which I think is really cool too. So yeah, I'll block them and um, these will be gift number one. And I have another gift and I'm keeping that one a secret. He has seen these, he, his birthday is coming up and I have another gift right here that I'm trying to keep a secret and which is really hard for me. Um, yeah, but I'll talk about that one later. But yeah, so they're self-drafted. I just cast it on 72 stitches on two millimeter needles, which I always use two millimeter needles for my socks. Uh, I am a loose knitter. I figured, I realized I don't know. I really don't know how to knit tighter. I sometimes have a really hard time getting gauge and I just don't want to like go down on her needle size. And I really don't know how I would be able to knit any tighter. So yeah, so I, these are two millimeter needles, 72 stitches. My boyfriend has large feet and it's ribbing. So I would usually use actually 68 stitches for his feet on two millimeter needles, but because it was ribbing, I did that. And then I did it in a two by one ribbing pattern. I did, I don't know how many rows, and then I folded it, folded it to make a folded cuff, uh, just like my Kirsten Bosch pattern. Then I needed the whole uh, leg. And then at some point I decided to go on to um, stockinette on one side, ribbing on the other side, a little more stitches for the ribbing side because the ribbing cinches in, so, and that's the top. So, and I did that till the end, and then I had a little more stitches on the top. So when I did the toe, I decreased a little earlier for the top than for the bottom, so that they would have the same amount of stitches, the top part and the bottom part. And then I just decreased as normal until I had, I think 17 stitches on each needle because I gave a little more to the top. It was a uh, uneven, odd, an odd number. So you have even and odd. In Dutch, it's even, it's even, and then odd is uneven, oneven. So that's why I always say uneven, but it's not a word. <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so that's another finished object. And then there is another finished object that I want to show you that I haven't shown you yet. And I have a question about, because this is a self-drafted slipover um, that I made using acrylic chunky leftover yarn from a cardigan that I had. This is the back. And I think this is the coolest detail. This is sides. And it's extremely uh, beginner friendly. And yeah, so I made this. Is this a, a interesting design? <laughs> So yeah, sorry, uh, see, I'm so out of practice. Um, this is my sky slipover. Um, and I was inspired by my leftovers, my chunky leftovers. And I thought of this idea of making this on the side. I've shown this before in like a bunch of videos ago, like somewhere in October, I think. Um, and I finished it just before I left for South Africa and then I couldn't show it because I didn't bring it. But um, this would be something really nice maybe to develop into a pattern right after my Kirsten Bosch socks release uh, as like my first garment. Um, yeah, and my question is, does that interest you? <laughs> is that an interesting pattern to bring out? Um, I'm still like looking for 
what um I don't know what my I guess it doesn't matter I guess I should just do it <laughs> it's just yeah you know you just yeah and I think I cracked a really nice code with this v-neck see how pretty it is it's like yeah not to like what is it toot my own horn or something but like it looks goes like in perfect shape it's really pretty and then I really like how this looks here too. But it's super beginner friendly. So I think it's really interesting construction too, because I made this up myself with this side thing. So if you're interested, let me know. That's my question. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's have a sip of coffee. I realized I forgot to show you some stuff that I also wanted to talk about. So the FO section is not over yet. So I have more finished objects. First off, when I got home from South Africa, I was extremely cold and I didn't have any mittens. So I made myself some mittens. And as you can see, I've already worn them a lot. So I wear them every time I go out. Um, and these are the arched, gusset mittens because there's an arched gusset and you can already see maybe it's a little too tight here and that's why there's little holes there it wasn't like that when I finished them so but um yeah they're perfect size for me I have tiny hands <laughs> so I'm actually not used to having the ends of my mittens or gloves to touch my fingers. So that was new for me because I made them to my hands, obviously, because I made them for myself. Um, yeah, here you can see how tiny my hands are. <laughs> I don't know. I just always think it's really funny that I like knit with these hands, but they're so tiny that like, I'm like, oh, so impressive. Tiny hands, but they can do so much. Um, yeah, uh, so I made the adult small size in one, so it's a free pattern, sorry, Arch Gusset Mittens by Pearl Soho, free pattern, and they're knit on a three and a half millimeter needle, but I used the 3.25, I actually didn't check my gauge, figured it was okay, but I'm a loose knitter, so I figured, yeah, it would be good to go down needle size. Um, I did the adult small and for the length, I think I did the children's size, but I just based it off my own hands. Um, I really like this detail. It doesn't really show that much in this yarn. I think if you have a little thicker yarn, you can see it a little better. Um, but I don't really like the top decreases. I don't mind them, but I think I would like it more if they're just... I don't really like think it's an addition. So there's a little bit of a special decreases at the top, but I thought I saw it and I thought on other mittens that I've seen knitted that it was prettier, but I don't really like it when I wear it. I would just normal decreases like around and yeah. It's mittens. Enough talk about the mittens. Um, yeah, so they're very useful. So that's really nice. And the other thing, this has been in storage while I was away, is the Nordic sweater that I made for my boyfriend um, that had, had been finished, but I blocked it and then it was too big and now it's not finished because I need to fix that. So, you can already see, <laughs> like, this is like the worst thing to do, I guess. But I put like a little, okay, I'll show you. It's huge, 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 huge. And the fit is perfect, except for it's too long. So uh, my boyfriend is really tall. He's two meters, so I like 198 or something, but two meters, so six foot five i don't know is that yeah, tall 
he's tall. Um, and I thought I just freestyled this pattern, kind of. Uh, well, not kind of. I wrote everything down, but I did freestyle it. Uh, it's I knitted it bottom up, and I didn't really think about how much it would grow with blocking, but it did grew grow. It did grow a lot. So I need to take a huge chunk out of this white. Um, and I'm gonna do that uh, by picking up stitches uh, on two rounds. So one just above this, this clipper. So I put a safety pin in to how much I wanna take out. I think it's like 17 rows or something. So I'm gonna pick up all my stitches on one round above and then below. And then I'm gonna cut my yarn at the top of that. And then like thread it, like rip it out. Um, and then I'm gonna Kitchener stitch it together. So that's the plan. Uh, yeah, and I, I wanna finish this for his birthday too. So then he would have the socks and this one. So that'd be nice. I started this like Christmas 2021. So it is uh, due to be done. And this is kind of what he requested, like a lot of color work. And I made all these uh, charts myself. Like I did a, um, like a, a two or a six, uh, like repeat, stitch repeat. I don't know if that makes sense. And that I didn't have to uh, carry my yarn too much. I think it's pretty cool. Yeah. So that's, that's what I was talking about. Like all these ideas that are like kind of patterns, but not really patterns. But I think if I would release this as a pattern ever, I would make it a little more simple on the, like I would pick one of them out that I think is really cool. Like I think the sleeve is really nice. It's like simple. Yeah, and then I think the front's maybe a little too busy and then on the back I have a little less. So I have a part on the front, like this part is only on the front and on the back, there's more stripes. So I think I like the back a little more than the front. The front's a little too busy, but he likes it and that's what matters. So that, those were my FOs. Um, ambulance. Um, then I think I can go into my whips Although I also have, I have so many things to show you. So I think I want to show you this first. I don't know. I'm just going however I want to do this because you don't need to follow the, the normal way of doing a podcast because there is no normal way because we all just do whatever. So um, I don't know if you guys know what this is, but this is the Sunness Garn. Meeked till, what did it say? Meeked till dame, which is soft for women. It's like a booklet, it's really popular. The Guernsey Genser is in here and the Amy Slipover. I don't know if you've seen people make them. I'll show you them. I'll, I'll get them quick. There's like a bunch of these. This is the Amy Slipover. This is that slipover that has the ties on the side so it's open here and then you have like ties and I know that uh, Knitting Traditions made it and so did Anna Passi Trevino who is a podcaster on YouTube as well um, and I'm trying to get the Guernsey Genser Guernsey sweater which is very similar they also both made that one so Knitting Traditions Inga made it and uh, Anna also made it and it's very similar to the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit and I actually got this booklet because I wanted to make this one for my boyfriend or I already got it and then I thought of that but it's this this sweater 
and he really likes this one um, more than the Ingrid sweater. So I thought that was funny. He was like, oh yeah, I really like this sweater. So actually I bought Drops Nepal. I am not gonna show you that one today because I have a full program. <laughs> but um, yeah, I got some Drops Nepal. I've been eyeing some Drops Nepal in navy color or there's this sea green or sea blue color and they were out of stock at every um every place that i buy drops here in the netherlands so uh yeah i was uh trying to find um that yarn and then one of the stores got it back in stock so i ordered it while i was in south africa so i thought that was pretty funny Meanwhile, I'm trying to find another picture of the uh, Amy slipover. Here we go. That's better. Here, this one. So I think this will be my next cast on. And I have to yarn right there. I'll get it. <laughs> so this is the same yarn that I used for the arched gusset mittens but in a different color. Um, it is a hobby, Sephira it's called, but if this was a, like a wrong um, batch or something, like I bought three different colors. So that sagey green one, this navy blue, and then like an Arctic light blue. And uh, I think the thing was that the, um, the weight was incorrect. So uh, I think it was supposed to be like a worsted or an Aran, and it's more like a DK. So it says it's 150 uh, meters, 150 meters for 50 grams. But I feel like it's a lot more because it's thinner. Does that make sense? And it's really fluffy and airy. So I think 150 for... 50 would be like a almost a sock yarn, as a sport weight um but it's really fluffy and airy so i think it is thicker than that i don't know i don't even know what i'm ex exactly saying but i got them in like a almost like a like a warehouse sale thing from hobby and i got so much and i like made a bunch of things with it but i still have so much left so i have like seven balls of this blue one and i think it's a perfect amount for the amy slip over and i also think it's really pretty in a darker color because i've seen it in, in like gray black uh like in the booklet it's in black and i think it will be really nice in that navy navy blue with a little bit of white strands in it here i'll show you one more time it's like really nice yeah so that's one of my knitting plans. Uh, and also that the Guernsey sweater for my boyfriend, but also I'm like working on this one and make those socks. And I'm also making him another pair of socks that I'm gonna show you now. So maybe it's, I'll wait a little bit with that. But maybe not, I don't know. Um, because it's almost his birthday and I wanted to have one of the things to be a surprise because he also always sees me knitting on things um, and I wanted to have like a surprise gift. So these are the Bear Paw socks by Andrea Maori. They're a DK weight sock pattern. And I know that she did, she does like a sock pattern every year for the long weekends after Thanksgiving or something in the US. Um, or not in the US, I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, and then she does like a challenge of knitting a pair of socks in that long weekend. And this year she did a DK weight sock and that was the bear paw sock. And it's designed for a DK weight and you can use a DK uh, or two strands of fingering. So I'm doing the, the latter, the second one, <laughs> the, the two strands of a fingering weight and i'm using i have the balls here i am using this dark green which is from hobby it's their rainbow four ply sock wool 
And then for like in forest green or something, like the forest green color. And then from Vilcolana, I'm using Vilcolana Arveta in, yeah, colorway 808. And I know he likes these colors. He's always, every time I show him my sock yarns, he requests a pair of socks from this dark, dark forest green. So I figured this would be a fun way of doing it. And yeah, I started it and I need to do it in secret so I can only do it in my office when he's here. But when he's not here, I'm like, today it was the first time he wasn't here while I was at home. So I've just been like knitting, knitting, knitting. So I did from like here to here, it's not that much, but I also have to work. <laughs> um, yeah, and I'm using a 3.25 millimeter needle instead of a two, three and a half. Um, and the only thing, I'm making the largest size. So he has like size US 15, which is like a size 50. EU, which are like the biggest uh, feet, <laughs> but I think this is almost too big, like how wide this is. And I just like shared a story on my Instagram, which if you don't follow me, you can follow me. It's Man Knitwear, just like the same as my YouTube. But I did a comparison of these socks and these socks, and this is a fingering weight, so I know that. But if you put these together, like you can see how much bigger it is. And I know, yeah, like the length doesn't matter, right? But like the width, the part at the toe is just so wide. And I don't know if that's normal for a DK weight sock because I've never knit DK weight socks before. So please help <laughs> here. Is that normal for a DK weight sock or is this normal for the pattern if you've knitted this pattern before like are they supposed to fit a little bit more like house socks or are they supposed to be snug because I feel like this is really big and I don't know if it's like doing it justice of how wide it is and I even when he was just like hanging out I was even like measuring his foot just randomly just like putting a measuring tape next to his foot and he was like <laughs> but that was to see if it's like too big and I think it's like just like exactly the width but I feel like it should have some like negative ease but maybe that's just me the negative ease queen <laughs> I don't know I knit everything with negative ease so maybe that's just me um yeah so let me know if you think this is too uh, wide and that I should rip out and maybe go one size smaller. I am on gauge, so that's not the, the thing. So did you make the bear paw socks or did you make DK weight socks before? And do you have any tips, tricks? What should I do? Please help. Let me know in the comments or talk to me on Instagram because I really don't know if I should rip it out. And now I'm like, okay, I should just continue knitting because I do have a deadline. It's like in the middle of February. So which is in like a week or something. And I still need to make the second one too. So uh, if I need to rip it out, I need to rip it out now. Help. Yeah, let me know. So that's something I'm working on. And then I wanna show you this one because I showed this to you before. For this is my own design, um, which is the Kirsten Bosch Polo uh, in this beautiful, like juicy green with pink details. And I have the pattern exactly in my head, but I worked on this like this much or something like just below the, uh, the polo neck until where I am now all on the plane back from Cape Town to Zurich, where we flew into. Um, so 10 hours of knitting, thought I had everything 
so well. <laughs> I don't know. I thought I had cracked the pattern, but I made a sleeve. <laughs> it's like, it's tiny. And I, I don't know. It's, this is the thing of uh, knitwear design, I guess. So I thought if I have the width, I actually haven't tried it on, so I could still try that, but I know for a fact it's not going to work. So what I wanted to do is create a saddle shoulder, which I did. And then I figured I would increase rapidly for the sleeves, but then you don't have like a long armhole. So this part is really small and you do have enough space in the, I'm not showing this correctly at all. Sorry. So yeah, it looks tiny, but it's just because it's some tiny needles, a tiny circumference, but um, so it is like high enough to be like armhole depth, like from here to here, but my sleeve, I started it so low that it would start like here. So I needed to start the sleeve way earlier, which I didn't think of. Uh, and now I'm going to have to rip so much out all of the, all of the knitting from the plane. So it was like 10, 11 hours. And from before that, and I'm like, ah, oh. yeah, I guess that's what knitwear design is, right? <laughs> so I'm just going to throw this in a corner um, because this was going to be like a summer, like I would say this is like an April t-shirt or May or June. So this is for later. Later concern is gonna hibernate for now. I'm gonna be angry at it. Although I'm just angry at myself. <sighs> yeah. So I actually, I already put it away and then I thought, oh, I'll talk about it. <laughs> I don't want to, but yeah. Um, I'll just put it away. You know what? I'm going to put it away now. Okay. There. I'm back. And I'm happy. Happy again. Because I have something really nice to show you. And I didn't put this in the screen because I kind of wanted it to be a surprise. But I've been knitting, 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 knitting on this ever since I was back. So that's like, it's the start of week two now. So just like a little over a week that I'm here and did the mittens first in a day and then, which was crazy. Um, but then I've been knitting on my sweater number 15. Yay. So this is my, whoops, excuse me. This is my sweater number 15 by my favorite things knitwear. And it's in this beautiful dusty artichoke colorway from Knitting for Olive, which is like the color for me for this sweater, like how I've seen it on other podcasters videos and like on Instagram and stuff. Uh, and I don't think this lighting does it justice. So I'll pop in a picture um, like just when I first put it out, then you can see it well, I think. Yeah. Um, I'll put in a picture of before when I took it, when I put some pictures on my Instagram where I did capture the color really well. Um, yeah, and it's this beautiful cabled sweater. And I got five balls of the merino and five balls of the soft silk mohair from Knitting for Olive. And this, and this is all that I have left right now. So there's 250 meters in the Merino and 225 in the uh, Mohair, which I think just make it the same length would be a lot easier because now I have less Mohair than I have Merino. And yeah, it's a little bit of a bummer. Um, and I 
realized I had been putting it off of like finishing it because I felt like I was not going to have enough yarn to finish it. So I figured, okay, I'll just, just rip off the bandaid and just start knitting. So uh, I looked up a lot of things online, like a lot. I went through all the projects on Ravelry and I found this one person who exactly wrote down how many um, cables she did for the body and for the sleeves, which was very, very useful. So I make, I'll make sure to do that too with this one. Um, and what I did, so I'm knitting it in a size medium, which would give me no positive e ease. No, it will give me a little bit of positive ease. Also when I put it on it has positive ease. But I'm, I picked up the amount of stitches for the arms for the extra small to save yarn. <laughs> so uh, I have like nine cables um, instead of 10 in the arm circumference. And I'm doing, I have 10 on, now nine still on this one, but I'm going to make 10. I have 10 on this one, which is already on like the tubing. I'm going to do 10 on this one. Then I'm going to block it. Then I'm going to try it on and see if that's kind of enough. Um, hopefully it's enough. I'll do the ribbing on both sleeves. I have short arms, so I'm pretty positive it'll be okay. And then I'm just gonna finish the body with whichever yarn I have left. Although when I'm out of mohair, I'm not gonna continue but with the merino by itself. So yeah, just see how far the mohair will get me. And I'll just have a cropped sweater. I'm not gonna buy another skein of the soft silk mohair, I just, it's just too much money at Knitting for Olive. I mean, yeah, if I would like buy it again, I would maybe do it, but I don't want to have like a different dye lot and like go through all that and then still have left leftover yarn. I'll, I'd rather just knit till the end of what I have here. And I mean, this one is also like, did almost the same method to finish this one. So I feel like it's okay. So yeah, it's gonna be done so soon. And I've had like the itch to cast on the Amy slip over just like the whole time. But I was like, I just need to finish this sweater now because I have three sweaters, including this one, that are like at the same stage almost, like one sleeve or like body almost done. Um, yeah, I just need to finish them. It's, 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 it's done now. <laughs> So yeah, so that's super exciting. Uh, yeah, I'll be ready very soon. Um, then, oh, I still have so much to show you and I, I'm already talking for so long, um, but I'll just go through it quickly. I've been spinning. So I did show you that I have this, uh, that I've got this drop spindle. But I've been, oops, I've been picking up spinning. So a friend that I made, um, because I was wearing a knitted outfit, um, she she taught me how to do this, which was nice, which was nicer than if I would uh, try to look it up online. Um, but I think I would have more fun if I would do it on a wheel, uh, just because it's a lot of, like twisting, but maybe I just need to get a hang of it. But so spinning and for the spinning, I have something exciting to show. Um, I got some like spinning bats. Is that how I should call them? Um, like some yarn and I got it from yarn, yarn and tea lover. And I'll, she has an Instagram. Um, I'll share it, uh, but I got it from Mark Bats, which is like the equivalent to Craigslist, I guess. Um, so I got some beautiful like yarn, uh, to spin with, even though I'm <laughs> just like beginning. So this will probably just be hanging around for a long time. So I've got this beautiful green 
and then those two pinkish colors. Super nice, super nice. So that's something I wanted to show you. And um, a long time ago, I told you that I got this Nora Gregory for myself and for my friend Taylor, who is Pearl Jade. And she had received the Nora Kakigori um, a long time ago. And she also sent me a yarn, like we did a yarn swap. So she sent me yarn in return, which was a package that was just lost forever. But when I was in South Africa, I suddenly got a message that I had to pay some import costs for New Zealand. So I was super happy. And I finally got the yarn that she sent me which is this enormous bag of, uh, I practice what it was. It's sheep's wool and arapawa. I'll put it on the screen if it, if it's, oh wait, oh here, merino, merino arapawa DK. And it's this beautiful, yeah, I think the color shows really well here. So you think it's gray and then you look a little, longer and you see it's actually brown and it's this beautiful neutral for me like I never knit with neutrals as you know um so this is perfect I think this would just make the perfect waffle loop sweater by other loops oh it's just in been in my head sorry for the cracking yeah. <laughs> so I'm really excited about that I think it's like a sweater quantity plus a slip over quantity. I think it's enough to do both. And she gave me a beautiful card, super nice. And she made some hand, she hand carved stitch markers out of shells. Amazing. So here you can see, so cute, super nice. So. Yeah, I'm really happy that I finally received it and that I got a little personal thing added to it as well. So yeah, I'm super excited uh, to do something with that. And yeah, um, that's everything I wanted to show you today. I think it's probably more because it's been a long month. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. I've noticed that YouTube hasn't been recommending my videos to a lot of people. So if you do like it, please give me a thumbs up or comment or yeah, subscribe. Um, just because, yeah, it, it would be nice for YouTube to pick up my videos again because they, they haven't been. <laughs> um, so if you do see this, please support me. Um, yeah, so uh i have been thinking about making a 2022 everything i knit video i know it's been late it's like too late almost to do it now but i haven't been able to do it before so if you think that's a good idea please let me know because maybe you want to see it i have a lot of ideas like i have a lot of comments about the things that i made because now i've been wearing them uh, so maybe that's interesting and i also I'm gonna make some videos about my acrylic yarn stash. So keep an eye out for those. And if you haven't checked it out yet, uh, my 2023 knitting plans video is also out. Also has no views because YouTube didn't show it to anyone. So if you're interested, go and watch that one. Um, and I'll see you in my next video. All right, bye everyone.